Hello, thanks for joining us. Today, cultural life after lockdown. Concerts around the world ground to a halt three months ago. Here in France, new government measures mean live performances can go ahead if organisers stick to strict sanitary rules. Catherine Kadir Clifford takes us for a peek at what concerts will look like in a social distancing environment. Squeezing among the crowd to find the best view is no longer an issue. X marks the spot and you won't have to jostle anyone to get there. There are only 50 people within this Strasbourg venue, which normally has a capacity for 900. But the band are determined to make it an experience to remember. Earlier in the day, the venue was organised according to the Ministry of Culture's safety rules. On en met 50 et uh, tous les 50 donc. Despite all the restrictions, neither the audience nor the band regrets taking part. C'est vital pour nous d'être là et de faire ça. On sera lié à jamais. Ça fait plaisir de revoir un peu l'énergie d'un vrai live. Très vite, en fait, on se fait reprendre dans l'ambiance d'un concert. Elsewhere, concert organizers are getting creative. Here in Albi, close to the southwestern city of Toulouse, this car park has been transformed into a drive-in venue. The concert is a sellout with 150 cars booked in. C'est déjà un début de convivialité, même si les gens ne peuvent pas être à côté, euh, euh, sauter, crier, euh, être libre de leur mouvement. Honking is tolerated and even encouraged in place of applause. The band aren't quite sure what to expect. On aime bien faire réagir les gens entre les chansons ou pendant les chansons, donc ça va être un peu difficile de tendre le micro et dire à vous ce soir. Mais mais écoute, une première, voilà, on est excité à l'idée de, de monter sur scène. As support acts get underway, excitement fills the cars. J'ai fait 200 bornes pour venir ici. Un régal. Comme c'est des groupes qu'on connaît de notre de notre génération, franchement, oui, c'était c'était quelque chose qu'on voulait, ouais. As the headliners hit the stage, some of the audience take to the roofs of their cars to show their appreciation. On voyait les gens, on voyait leur regard à travers le pare-brise et puis même dehors, puisque les gens sont pour la plupart sortis du véhicule, montés sur les toits et tout, donc c'était une très belle image. For now, these concepts are filling the gap for live music, but many are still waiting impatiently for the day they'll be able to squeeze back into a packed out venue. We're next to the Palace of Versailles, just outside of Paris, which has reopened to the public. Olivia Salazar Winspur went to check it out. Two days without any visitors, the Chateau de Versailles closed its golden gates in mid-March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And now that we're finally allowed back inside, there are a few new rules to follow. Visitors must reserve their ticket and their time slot in advance, preferably online. They've got a special application for that, and that's to keep visitor numbers to an absolute minimum. Then, once in the building, you have to wear a mask. We're going to find out what's changed inside with Thierry Gausserand. Thanks for joining us. In your opinion, what will be the biggest change in terms of the experience for the visitor in the castle? I think it's the opportunity to, to uh, enjoy the castle with a less crowded uh, room. We offered uh, the visitor new point of views. 
like in this place, you have time to admire this uh, beautiful sailing, the biggest in Europe at that time, or the painting of uh, Veronese at the end. And when you implement safety measures in a historical building, a World Heritage Site like this one, what are the specific challenges? We can do nothing. Everything is forbidden. So we have to uh, invent light transformation, or even for the renovation work. So in this place, we. Uh, put these things, it's just uh, put on the floor, on the, on, uh, and uh, that's the same thing in the, in the courtyard. We uh, painted the uh, little sun, little uh, yellow sun, like the, gold, the gilded sun, to show uh, the, the distance uh, between uh, every visitor in the queue. So uh, there is no, uh, no big works, no transformation. iconic spaces remain unchanged. The Hall of Mirrors, the Queen's Bedchamber and the Hall of Battles are all accessible to visitors. But to see the King's private chamber, the Opera House and the Royal Chapel, only guided tours of 10 people are permitted. The museum's director tells us more. It's a big challenge. In fact, the palace was like in a coma. It was an unprecedented situation, so it's just to make it live again. And that might not be so easy for us. It will be a real challenge to see who's coming back, what public. Of course, it will be very different from before. And of course, we've been working all, all the time, not as usual, but from the beginning, we progressively increased the activity inside the palace. And so we want it to be ready and perfect for our visitors. And overall, how would you describe the impact this long period uh, of closure has had on the castle and on its grounds? It's hard to know the impact in the minds of people, of visitors. It's probably very different for all different uh, places of the world. We know that we have uh, about 85% of foreign visitors, which is a lot. And probably the reaction of being like this without any possibility to come to Versailles. It must be different for the Asians, for Americans, for Europeans. And we'll see that when they come back. Uh, in fact, the impact will probably be a change in the type of visitors we have. Probably the national visitors, local visitors will find it an opportunity to come back to Versailles. And um, the desire probably will increase. I'm sure the impact has to be positive, but we don't know. And have you been able to make the most of this time while the, the gates were closed to do some repairs to improve things here on the site? During this time of closure, we've had the weeks we needed to do things that we normally cannot do because it's always open to the public except on Mondays. But even on Mondays, we have a lot of things going on. So for instance, the Hall of Mirrors have been, has been completely cleaned and restored and all the lighting has been uh, maintained. So now we see it in the most perfect, pristine and glittering aspect that it hasn't had since the big restoration of 2007. So those things, yes, we've been able to do much uh, faster than we usually do every Monday. The famed musical fountain shows are also starting up again, and given how vast Versailles' gardens are, it shouldn't be too difficult to practice social distancing in 800 hectares of parkland. In any case, the chateau itself is confident that the crowds will return and is already looking ahead to cultural events and exhibitions for the end of this year. The Palace of Versailles is among a number of museums that are opening up again. Some institutions are finding it easier than others to welcome the public while respecting social distancing. Pas de petite salle, c'est un, un énorme espace de plus de 3000 mètres carrés. Et donc, euh, c'est sans doute plus facile pour nous, d'un point de vue architectural, euh, de pouvoir garantir qu'on peut étaler un petit peu, si je puis dire, c'est pas très beau comme image, mais on peut répartir les visiteurs. One thing many of us craved during lockdown was nature. If you want a cultural spot with a beautiful outside experience, you can go to the Giverny Gardens, which were the inspiration for much of French impressionist painter Claude Monet's art. It's just reopened outside of Paris to the public. We'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.
1963, more than 2,000 children from Reunion Island, a French department in the Indian Ocean, were deported to mainland France by the authorities. On arrival, they were sent to live in rural areas left empty by depopulation, such as the Creuse region, where children were put to work on farms and in factories. They were sometimes made welcome, but most were ill-treated. Their parents, mostly illiterate, had given permission for them to leave without realizing they would lose their children forever. More than 50 years later, France 24 accompanied them on what for many was their first return visit to their native island. France's stolen children, all this week on France 24. Because a new page of history gets written every day. Because breaking news can't wait. Information everywhere. In all situations. On every subject. Understanding the world. Imagining the world. France 24. A different take on the news. Liberté. Equality. Actuality.